Well, it was bound to happen. It's been four years, and my time at Taft is pretty much done now. Um, I wanted to make this video for you guys to allow me to think back on these last four years and to also give you some advice or words of wisdom, I guess you could say, heading into these next years that uh, you're in high school and I'm no longer there. Um, I'm going to break this video into three parts. One, the retrospective, so just everything, all my feelings about the last four years that I've been there. Um, the second, second part will be all the stuff that I hated or did not enjoy, okay? Hopefully there's not a lot, but I can guarantee you there will be. And then third will be all the great moments. All the times where I was like, this is why I'm doing it. Okay? I'm going to try not to get emotional. I don't think I will because it's just me talking about it. So um, if you guys want to skip to any specific time, I'll put it down in the description. But other than that, let's get right into the retrospect of these past four years. So it all started from day one where I walked onto campus. I met Mr. Goober and he's like, all right, go down to the band, uh, meet everybody. And I'm like, okay. So I walked down to the football field and I swear there's like the smallest block of kids. And I'm, and I walk down there and I'm just like, is that it? Is that everybody? Where, where's everybody else? And little did I know that you guys were a one a band. And at the time I didn't even know what that was. So I come from a band of about 150 kids. I don't know if you guys know this, but I do. And, uh, yeah, coming from that to you guys, and when you started, you guys were maybe about like 40 kids, maybe. So yeah, it was a it was an interesting experience. Um, my first year, it's it's hard to remember much. Um, I was very very I was still young. I didn't really quite know what I was doing. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Being a part of that organization, I just did it because. My cousin, she's like, hey, I'm in marching band. You want to help out? And I was like, sure, why not? I'll give it a try. So the first year, it was uh, really nothing too special. Uh, I would say the biggest thing that I remember from my first year was we had the most egotistical, stereotypical trumpet player ever. And I hated it. I kept trying to be like, hey. You're a trumpet section, not a trumpet player, so stop doing that. And he's like, okay. And then every time we performed, he would just be all soloistic and just scream at the top of his lung. So that's it for the first year. Um, second year, just to remind you, my first year was Mangione Magic, if you didn't remember. Second year, uh, that's Shades of Latin. So immediately, right as we got the show, I was like, we're doing another Latin show. <laughs> that, I mean, it didn't. It didn't really go on that long. Um, I really, I really tried stepping up my game this year. It was also because the first year, Mr. Griever was like, "Can you just work with Pitt? Maybe like help a few trumpet players." And I was like, "Okay." Second year, he pretty much made me on music. So I was like, "Okay, I really need to step up my game. I need to do my research. I need to prepare all this crap." Obviously, it wasn't as good as what it could have been but again I was still young this was my second year doing this and I've never teched at a high school before so second year Shades of Latin um it was a fun year it's good music um but where I came from my high school we played a lot of just show band shows we did Earth Wind and Fire and we did Beatlemania so something like Shades of Latin I, I've experienced before and personally it was very uh it was very repetitive like, yeah, the music was great and all, the crowd loved it, but eventually I just got tired of it, you know? There's really nothing else that the kids can learn other than play the music exactly the way you hear freaking J-Lo play it. And whatever. So, yeah. Um, wasn't too eventful. Um, we That was the first year that we qualified for SCSB Away that I was there. Um, my first year ever going and we ended up getting third so that was really really impressive and the whole atmosphere of how competitive Taft was and still is it was it was impressive 
because my high school band we we were not competitive of all at all we were pretty much like our city's band so we would play fun halftime shows we would do parades we do gigs outside all these businesses and everything so it was a very different world and this my second year really solidified what this band was and what they wanted to do um third year third year uh that's when things really started to step it up third year was uh Cirque du Soleil's La Noba and that was the first year where I really was like "Ooh, okay this music is like we can actually do something with it we you know kids can actually learn stuff it's not just like the typical pop music that's um arranged for marching band you know it's actually somewhat original music and you know it can actually tell a story um that was another good year uh the one one uh, one memory that I remember was uh and a lot of my students, at least the current drum major now, they, he always brought up that uh, I would always be next to the drum major podium. And this is, I'll go into this detail into the second half if you want to skip to it. Um, uh, this, is, this is the year that I started opening my eyes and seeing what this program actually was. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Gruber is not a marching band guy. He doesn't want to do it. If it was up to him, he would do concert band all year. But because you guys are so dedicated and so willing to work, he allows marching band to happen. And so that leaves a lot of the staff in charge. And this was the year that I really started to figure out that the staff was not up to par with what you guys wanted and what I believed high school staff should be. So I was complaining a lot, and I really, really contemplated on, like, do I really want to do this, like, with this band for however long I plan to do it for? But back then, I didn't know how long I was going to be here for. So I was really thinking about it. I was like, do I want to keep working here and being with these people? Um, other than that, the second year in a row, we qualify for SASB Away. Uh, we get third again, another great show. Because me personally, um, this was a really great show because uh, this was really when we started to dive into like props and staging and like really crazy stuff. And the ending was, oh gosh, the ending was beautiful. I loved how those two stage props that we had eventually came together. They smacked together in the field. I remember it so clearly everyone in the stands was like, whoa. And then you hear, dun, 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 and then the show's end and everybody just loses their minds. Third year was a great year. It opened my eyes in good and bad ways. But third year was a very, very solid year. Moving on to this year, this past year, year four, uh, things really started to take a U-turn. Um, this was, I knew, I knew going into this year that this was going to be my last year regardless because I'm on the path now that I'm going to start doing student teaching and I have to, I'm going to have to dedicate my full time to that. And I can't give like, a little bit of time to the marching band they're working for because it that's unfair to the students so all of that leading up to it i knew i knew i had to prepare these kids for what was going to happen these kids talking to you guys um so it, it was it was hard it was definitely hard but uh i i came in i came into i came into this year more prepared than i've ever been because it's it's four years now um this is pretty much my sixth year in college. I'm in the credential program. I know every, I know not everything. I'm not going to be super uh, conceited about it. I know the things that I need to know to teach effective high school marching band. But unfortunately, thinking about last year and what happened last year, I had to de I had to cope with the whole staff situation again. And uh, I'm going to move on. I'm going to go on to that um, in the second part in the second section of the video but other than that this year was a uh, was a rough one yeah it was a uh, it's unfortunate but at the same time it was it was beneficial a lot of the kids they felt very um i guess they felt sluggish they didn't really know what they wanted to do this year and uh it was hard getting it was hard getting you guys mentally focused and set on a goal and you guys know me. I'm never one to talk about. We need to get first. First, we need to get it. I'm like I'm not about that. I'm I'm always, 
I'm always harping on you guys for self-improvement. And I definitely think that we achieved that this year. Okay, I definitely think we did. Because for the third year in a row, we qualify for SASBOA again. Now, unfortunately, we don't place. I know. And I've told, I talked to the seniors about this. I feel your guys' pain. I feel it. I know. It, it's rough. Working so hard to get all the way to that point and to not get anything back. But you gotta remember, guys, that this is the this is this is all experience. This is what it, this is what it means to be a student. You work and you work to the end game, and sometimes you don't you don't get it. You just gotta you just gotta shake it off. Think about what you could have done better, what you did wrong. Realize that there are things out of your control, and then move on. Okay, you gotta move on. You can't you can't. You can't think about stuff like that for too long because it's only going to hurt you in the long run. Which leads me into the second part of the video, which is probably everyone's favorite part, the bad. The bad. All right. There was a there's there's a lot of bad that I'm going to cover. And I want to try to cover as much as I can because I want to be truthful to you guys. And I think you guys deserve the truth. Okay? So, let me think. Year one. Year one wasn't, there wasn't anything terrible just because I didn't know what I was doing. I was new to the whole thing. Um, nothing really all that bad. Uh, second, I'll move on to the second year just because first year is such a, such a rush. Or se yeah, first year, not not a rush. We just blazed through it with nothing. Um, second year. Second year was when I started to... Was when I started... My eyes started opening up to how I didn't agree with um, with Sam's teaching. All right, I'm just going to... I'm going to go straight... I'm going to go explicit this entire thing. He, second year was when I really started to realize that Sam's teachings were nothing like mine. No, pay attention here. It'll this will evolve. The, f the second year was when I realized that Sam's teaching wasn't like mine. That's important. Okay. Um. Let's see. Second year. I mean, every year there's always that um, kids getting on each other's asses. And be like, oh, you're not working hard enough. Oh, why do you not care? That happens with every year. So I'm not going to address that every single time I talk about a year. Okay. Um, third year. Third year. This is when I start to realize that Sam's not a good teacher. Notice how a lot of the bad revolves around Sam. Shocker. Um, yeah, everything, everything he did, I disagreed with. And the fact that we are contracted as two different jobs. I'm contracted as the music tech. He's contracted as the visual tech. Yet, once he's done with his one thing of visual for the day, he starts getting up in my business and music. And because this was my third year, and everybody else on your staff is alumni. Remember, everybody on your staff is alumni. I didn't feel like it was appropriate for me to... Um, speak out of terms because I didn't know Mr. Gruber enough while everybody else on the staff line had a personal relationship with him for longer than three years which is how long I've known Mr. Gruber so I was very I was very passive aggressive my third year and some of you guys may have noticed that uh, and I apologize that if this if this affected you guys but you can't it's really hard and dangerous I'm gonna say to have two staff members with the same kind of stubborn personalities like me and Sam that don't understand their own job. That's as best as I can describe it and that's the best way I can phrase it. I am very stubborn. I'm going to admit that. Sam is also very stubborn. But it's the fact that he believes this is the year that it happens. This is the year where I see that Sam treats this band like his he doesn't abide by mr gruber's rules he he says oh yeah okay mr gruber all right all right all right but he does everything on his own accord 
He doesn't care about what Mr. Gruber wants. He doesn't care about what Mr. Gruber thinks. All he cares about is himself and making himself look good. All right. That's all I'm going to say for the third year. Okay. Fourth year. This is when I've fully matured and I've realized what exactly this program is. Okay. Now, caution here. Some of you guys might not like where I go with this. So if you want to skip this, head over to the third section. Uh, Timestamp is down below. Um, this is when I, I tell myself, and I address it to Mr. Gruber, that I'm not going to stand for any more of Sam's shit. This is the last year that I was going to be here, and I wanted to give the students, you guys, the best education that you deserved in terms of music. Obviously, I'm not going to teach drill or visual. I don't know anything about that. The only thing I will ever do is if I see somebody having a really big issue and I know the visual by heart, then I'll step in and help them. But I'm never, ever, ever going to say, no, 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 we can't put this visual here. That's stupid. That's wrong. All right. I, I don't do that. All right. But when you look over to the other caption, you see Sam, he just... He scratches the surface of his visual. He says, okay, we're going to do this 20 count visual that requires so many movements. We're only going to do, we're only cover for one day. And for the rest of the season, it's your guys' job to make sure you get it perfect. Anyway, let's talk about music now. It's, it's just not helpful. How, how are you going to give your kids a visual that is very physically demanding and not go into full on detail with them? That's wrong. This this is the reason why your guys' visual score has never been good enough to win. I don't say that to like put you guys down or anything. This, this, is, this is me being as truthful as I possibly can. The reason why you guys did not see as much success as you wanted was because your visual score was not high enough. Alright? I need you guys to know that. It just wasn't good enough. And it all goes back to Sam. He doesn't realize that he's not doing his job correctly. He thinks, oh, I'll just do this, and then we'll talk about music, because I like music. Oh, okay, so you're contracted to teach visual, but you like music? Oh, okay, that makes a whole bunch of sense, you fucking moron. I'm the one contracted to do music. I'm the one who's doing my fucking job, and why we're placing so high in music every goddamn time. And that you look at the brack, you look at the overall caption, the freaking recap. Visual score takes a huge dip. Music's always up here. Visual's always down here. And every single time we see that recap, Sam's like, "Dude, our music's great. Our music's great. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome." And then I'm like, "But our visual score's crap." And he's like. Yeah, but our music, or we need to work on music more. The fuck are you talking about, dumbass? It's just, oh god, it's just, it's a, it's a struggle. It's definitely a struggle. And um, continuing with this fourth year because this is really where it all comes back around to me realizing what's happening was um. I've been de I've been holding in a lot of emotions for Sam. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'll tell you now. I've been holding in so much emotion about Sam and how he's not doing his job correctly. And I hate that he thinks he's qualified to do my job when I'm studying in college for this while he's doing some stupid fucking major like civil engineering. Nobody gives a shit about that. Anyway, I it gets to the point where I have a breakdown. And again, I apologize for this. I hate being emotional towards you guys. It's not something that you high school kids should be seeing. But unfortunately, it happened, and that's all my fault. But the fact is, I have a breakdown near the midpoint of one of our evening rehearsals. And then I go to Mr. Gruber, and I give him my ultimatum. I tell him, Mr. Gruber... I can't work here anymore if Sam's going to continue to do what he does. And we have this whole conversation of him trying to keep me on. And I'm telling him that I just I can't stay here. It's not worth it. I don't enjoy it anymore. And he's, he's just trying to talk me into staying. And, um, and uh, he, he brings up one thing that I will talk about when we, when we go to... Um, 
a third section. All right. So anyway, he he get, he gets me to stay. Um, I I slowly slowly turn the knob on Sam. Every time he tries cutting in, I s passively aggressively turn the notch more and more, telling him stop talking about music. You need to do your fucking job. And I think it truly went all the way. It turned up to 11 at Moore Park. Most of you guys know what happened. And you guys were like, James, I love you for this. Um, the week of Moore Park, Sam incorporates this new thing where he's like, I want you guys to full blast bad tone. Or, an, or, or let me, I think this is more accurate. I need you guys to play full blast bad tone. And you'll be uh, so much better because make America great again. Uh, so anyway, yeah, he incorporates this without my knowledge, okay? Because because of that incident, I forced myself to go one day a week, Wednesday morning every every week after that. So he incorporates that, and then at Moore Park, he has them warming up after we've already tuned and done our sectional warm up. He has them full blast another warm-up. I cut them off and I tell them never do that again It is not beneficial. I don't want you guys doing it anyway and Smart Sam decides to step in is like uh no uh it actually forces them to play out more and be a part of the sound and I immediately blow up at him I'm like Sam shut up. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay? So shut up. And he immediately just, he goes into the corner and then just turns around and just stares at it. I lost it there. I truly did. But it, uh, that, that was, that was pretty much it. Occasionally he would, um, uh, occasionally he would talk about music. And at that point I was just so done with it that I just couldn't do anything. And uh, we eventually got a new person, Lewis, uh, who actually shared my same opinion about Sam. And he was actually starting to be a little bit more aggressive towards him, which made the load on me um, a lot better, which I really appreciate. Now, we are done with the clean. We, we're done with all the bad stuff. All right. We're now going to move on to section three, which is the good stuff. Finally. Finally. Okay, year one. Um, year one, I would say the best thing about year one was you guys were very, very generous to me. You guys made me feel welcome. Um, no one was, like, too aggressive towards me, like, teach me this, teach me this, teach me this. And at the same time, I wasn't like, learn this, learn this, learn this. I just went with your guys' flow, and it was really, really good. It made it, it, made it easy for me to fit in. Um, second year, we qualified for SCSB away and got third place. That, oh my goodness, that was, that was amazing. I, I, I didn't know it could happen. I didn't know a 1A band like Taft could achieve what you guys achieved. It was, it was amazing. And that night when everyone's, and everyone has their medals and everyone's crying and hugging, uh, I'll never, I'll never forget it. It was, uh. It was a great memory. Um, third year, again, qualified for SCSB away and got third place again. I there's not much to say because it happened again. Um, but uh, one of the funniest moments, though, one of the funniest moments, third year, it was uh, at Moore Park. We, we had a lot of fires going on. And... Uh, we decided to make the bold move of taking a knee after our performance and giving, um, oh wait, no, it wasn't a fire, it was a shooting. Uh, we decided to take a knee and pay our respects to the shooting that happened in Thousand Oaks. I don't remember exactly the time frame of it, but it happened pretty recently towards Moore Park. So we took a knee, moment of silence, and then we started walking off the field. And right as we started walking off the field, oh my God, number one cringiest moment of all time Sam runs onto the field and he's like that was for them and I'm just like I'm like bruh that was 
awful. Like, it was so awful that I actually laughed. I shouldn't have laughed because, like, it was immediately after a moment of silence. But it was so funny that I just, I couldn't help but, like, laugh and just hold, like, my smile away from people seeing it. Because it was just, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal? I don't know what that means. Keep, leave that in, editor. Editor's me. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was third year. Um, fourth year. Fourth year. Fourth year. The fourth year's tough. Um, I would say the biggest thing about the fourth year was the fact of how unified the senior and the leadership organization was. The, the, you guys gave me the chance to have meetings with you guys and really talk about how you guys want to run this band. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I wasn't going to be here anymore. And I didn't want what I taught you guys to just fly out the window and never be remembered ever again. So those, those weekly meetings we had, like the three that we had, I really, really enjoyed. And from what I saw, you guys really, felt, you guys were really digging into it as well. You weren't just there because I asked you to be. You guys were, you guys were fully supporting the idea, and it was, um, it was really great. It was really great. I really appreciate that. I want to thank you guys for that. Um, again, for the third year in a row, we qualify for SACB away. Not gonna bring up any bad news. But we qualified again, which was nice. Um, yeah, there's really, really not much else. I think I've, I've clean slated everything that I need to. Um, we'll end it with some closing remarks here. Um, oh yeah, I did forget to talk about one bad. Another bad thing was uh, this this year we tried getting another tech, and. Oh my god, probably the worst person in human history that I've ever met. All this guy did was just scream and shout and be aggressive towards you guys as students. And I'm just like, how the fuck is this right? How do we feel safe allowing this guy to talk to you guys like that? But anyway, okay, enough. Enough of that. We're done. Let's just say I hated him. Um, my ending remarks. I just want to say... Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to teach you and to build a relationship with you guys. I, re I really felt something special with each and every one of you. I know I didn't spend a whole lot of time with some of you, and I know I spent more time with others. But know that each one of you, I will remember. Okay? You guys brought something special to the table every single year and every single new batch of freshmen. You guys brought something new. And you taught me new things that I, I wouldn't normally try. So take, take that into consideration. You taught me something when it's my job to constantly teach you guys something. So I thank you for that. Really, from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't be more thankful for this experience. Uh, without, without you guys, I don't, I don't know what I'd be doing. Uh, jokes aside. I don't, I don't really know what I'd be doing. I'd probably just be doing credential program and just living my life. But you guys made it fun. You guys made it entertaining. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, last thing. Last thing before I go. Um, this is for my people who are coming back next year for another year of marching band. Um, I want you guys to believe, Okay. I know a lot of you guys are afraid that because I'm leaving, things will not be the same. You guys are going to take a downfall. But I really want you guys to just believe, okay? Believe that something good will come out of next year. And believe that you guys can maintain what you've been doing for the past four years, okay? It's important. If you guys can't, if you guys can't do that, I promise you, it's not going to be a fun year. Believe in yourselves, okay? And, um... For those of you who are returning for another year, really think about this, okay? I'm going to give you a second to concentrate. Please listen to these words carefully. 
if you guys want to continue to succeed, you need to let Mr. Gruber know and be firm about this, that if you guys want to get better, you need to drop everybody, except for two exceptions, Lewis and Anthony. You need to drop every single one of your staff members. You guys can't afford to bring in alumni every single year. They don't contribute anything, okay? I'm sorry, but they don't. Sam doesn't know anything but himself and winning. Jewel doesn't even teach half the time, okay? Delilah doesn't know what she's doing. Honestly, she doesn't know what she's doing, okay? Brendan, he... I don't know what his deal is. Brendan does not know what he's doing, okay? Four alumni that if you dropped and actually got people who were qualified for, I guarantee you, you guys will love it probably even more than when I was there, okay? So think about it. Tried, I'm not, I'm not trying to um, overturn and like destroy everything that Taft is all about. But if you guys want to get better and enjoy your marching season, you should tr contemplate thinking about getting rid of your alumni staff because they don't bring anything new to the table. I promise you. Sam does the same shit every year. Okay? Why your visual score is so long? Jewel contributes nothing. Why our guard is always last place. Now, I'm not blaming the guard, okay? The guard members are doing all that you can do, but it's the guard tech that's causing the problems. And then you got Delilah, who's trying to fit in, but doesn't know what she's actually doing, doesn't actually know how to teach. And then you got Brennan, who's too fresh out of high school to actually be professional. All he cares about is being goody-goody with the students and like having a good time. So that's it. Think about getting rid of your alumni. You can't learn anything from alumni, okay? That's it. So... And I've said everything I needed to say. If you want to talk to me about it, let me know on my Discord. Um, I will try my best to respond to you guys and be available to you guys. Um, but other than that, again, I want to thank you for this experience. You guys opened up my eyes to so much more than just like show band shows and stuff like that where I'm from. It's This was an experience of a lifetime that I will never forget. And it's because of you guys that I was able to feel this way and give you guys everything that I could. So thank you. And good luck in these years to come. Bye.